there are a whole bunch of things that we need to understand even before we get into lightning experience the syntax that has to be used in lightning experience so on and so forth out of which the first one is we really have to understand why did salesforce had to reinvent the wheel and come up with something called lightning experience when they already have a pretty much mature and standard framework which is visual force and also apex and the answer for that is salesforce classic which is this is built on something called traditional page life cycle and what i mean by that is whenever i try to click on any button or link for that matter when i try to click on this link here you can see that the whole page is getting reloaded likewise when i try to fetch list of all the account records you'll see that the page got reloaded once again and when i try to open up any one particular record the page gets reloaded and when i try to edit the record the page gets reloaded once again and when i try to save the record it gets reloaded once again so for every request that the user is trying to initiate which is either clicking on the button or clicking on the link there is a request that is being sent and server is going to send us back the response and browser understands the response it is going to reload the whole page and show the output in the browser now with lightning experience what happens is let me navigate back to lightning experience and the way i'm going to do it is i can click on this link or i can make use of this link here so now we got navigated back to lightning experience from salesforce classic and here what happens is everything is reinvented and built using something called single page architecture and what i mean by that is whenever i try to click on let us say one of the account records let us say i'm trying to click on this you'll notice that the header is not going to reload and just this section here is going to get reloaded let me click on that there you go just this section got reloaded and likewise what happens is when i click on details you'll notice that this section here is not going to get reloaded and this section here is not going to get reloaded or re-rendered only this section gets reloaded or re-rendered there you go i try clicking on details and we'll notice that only this part got reloaded likewise when i try to change any particular field here i'm going to remove this and the name here is displayed here once again so the moment i make some change here and the moment i click on save what happens is there is no page reloading thing which is happening but then this got immediately reflected so page reloading thing happens only when you navigate back to lightning experience and that too only once after that for every request that you send which is nothing but clicking on a button or a link request will be sent and response will be received back and only that section gets re-rendered and the response is displayed back to user so you can visualize the whole thing as a single js file let us say index.js and you'll get navigated to that when user tries to navigate back to lightning experience from salesforce classic or when user tries to log in into their account and after that for every request that we initiate request will be made and then ui will be formed dynamically and it will be displayed back to users without any page reloading thing happening so this is what single page architecture is all about so the reason why salesforce had to reinvent the whole wheel and come up with something called lightning experience when they already have a pretty much standard framework which is visual force and apex is because they wanted to give that single page architecture flexibilities and advantages to users hence they had come up with something called lightning experience and the next thing that we need to notice is we need to enable something called my domain or custom domain it's only then your org will be capable of rendering lightning components and there are once again multiple reasons for that and let me show you the process of enabling my domain post which we'll be looking at all the reasons let me navigate back to setup and let me search for something called my domain so enabling my domain is basically a four step process initially we need to pick a subdomain here i'm going to say teja hyphen aura let me check if it is available there you go it is available now i'll register it once after you register it there is no way you can edit it so be doubly sure when you try to enable your subdomain so i'm going to click on this you can see that this step got highlighted and it is going to take a couple of minutes to enable my domain and then it is going to send you an email saying that your my domain is properly configured let me refresh it once there you go it is done and now it says that your domain name is so and so and we need to get into the third step which is we need to log in since i'm already logged in it is going to maintain the session and you'll be logged in okay the next thing is we need to deploy it back to users 
it is going to be four step i'm going to click on this okay now it is deployed and then you'll come across a few options which is used to set up your login policy so on and so forth let me go back to this so these are a few reasons why we had to enable custom domain which is you can highlight your business identity with your unique domain url that is one thing and the next thing is you can brand your login page which is nothing but you can customize the color of the login page so on and so forth likewise you can also customize the content to the right side of the login page you can make sure that your branded images and customized images are shown to the right of the login page likewise we can block or redirect page requests that don't use new domain name and the next thing is we can work in multiple salesforce orgs at the same time as mentioned these are a few reasons why we had to enable custom domain and there are multiple other reasons as well but i would say these are the primary ones and the next thing is lighting experience is component based framework and it is not mvc based framework salesforce classic or visual force and apex is completely built on mvc framework where we'll have something called model view and controller but lightning experience is built on something called components which is nothing but let me show you an image if you look at this image this is called project aura which is nothing but a modular phone concept wherein we can build a complete mobile phone using different components something like a camera component something like a battery component memory card components so on and so forth let us say that you are not okay with your 20 megapixel camera component then you can just remove your camera component and you can use maybe a 40 megapixel camera component and then you can start using it and this is what modular phone concept is all about similar to this in lightning experience what happens is we'll try to break a huge requirement into multiple small components and each and every component is going to be super independent and reusable so we'll try to break one requirement into multiple small chunks which is nothing but components and put together all these components will form the requirement that we had to build and at this point of time if you think things are not that clear that is absolutely fine once after we start building lightning components things will be a lot more clearer and the next thing that we need to understand is with lightning components what happens is whenever we try to create a lightning component a resource bundle will be created let me demonstrate to you what exactly is resource bundle let me navigate back to the arc and then let me quickly crank open the developer console and now I'm going to show you how to create an Aura component. Click on File and then New and then click on Lightning Component. Let me try to give a name here. I'm going to say Explore Hello World. And here you'll find five to six checkboxes. That is absolutely fine. Ignore all these checkboxes for time being and then click on Submit button. Now, what happens is your component is created and to your right you'll see a palette and this palette is going to have eight files. So once after you create a lightning component it is not going to just create one file for you rather it is going to create eight files for you and the first file is going to be component file where we'll try to make use of some markup and this markup is going to be pretty much similar to our apex tags that we have seen in visual force pages and also html tags the tags that we'll be using are going to be completely different from apex tags and html tags but then the concept of markup remains the same which is we'll be having tags based on the tags it is going to render some output for us after that we have something called controller this is the place where we'll try to write some core javascript and followed by that we have something called helper now this guy here plays a crucial role this is used for two purposes first purpose is whenever there is some sort of code repetition which is happening in component file we'll try to follow dry design pattern which is do not repeat yourself and we'll try to move that repeated code to helper and we'll try to call that helper method from our controller this is the first reason that we have helper file and the second reason is something which is a lot more complex and we'll be talking about that maybe after a couple of sessions and then we have something called style file where we can write some styles related to this component and then we have something called documentation now whenever a person tries to create a lightning component he's supposed to write some sort of documentation about this particular component so that when the new developer joins the team it becomes a lot more easy for him to understand what exactly this component does what is the purpose of this component so on and so forth and then there is something called renderer which is nothing but if you want to invoke a piece of code when the component is initialized or if you want to invoke a piece of code when it is re-rendered or if you want to invoke a piece of code when the component is destroyed then we'll have that logic here and then we have something called design once again i don't want to talk about design at this point of time because when i try to explain this it becomes a little bit complex but then when i show you a particular example then things will be a lot more easy to understand so i'll try to talk about design at later point of time likewise we have something called svg which is nothing but in case if you want to include any svg files then we can make use of this file and we can use the svg file within this and then we have something called bundle version settings once again we'll be talking about this when we talk about something called lightning locker service so basically the concept is whenever we try to create a lightning component 
it is not going to just create one file rather it is going to create eight files for us and each and every file has got its own purpose this is what resource bundle is all about so yeah this is pretty much about the introduction which is we tried looking at why did salesforce had to come up with something called lightning experience and then we looked at why do we have to enable custom domain and we also looked at how to enable custom domain or my domain and then we looked at what is the design pattern on which lightning framework is built and then we also looked at something called what exactly is resource bundle so that's all for this episode i'll call it a day and i'll see you in the next one